Hi, my name is David Kirschbaum. I'm the director of the Arizona Research Program for Nonviolence International New York. In this talk, we're going to utilize the peace theory of Johann Galtung uh, to explain modern peace building and the measurement of the culture of peace by the Barrett value system as a form of modern peace building. We all know how ironic our world is, that it's so full of beauty and yet so full of violence. And many people are desperately asking, why is our world so full of violence? And nobody seems to be able to do anything about it. And how can we create a lasting peace? Well, there's a professor at the University of Oslo in Norway that has some very interesting answers. Johan Gautung has a theory of peace and violence that describes both where we have no control over violence, we have no say, and where we do have control, where we can change violence into peace and nonviolence. So where Gautung describes where we have no control over violence is the natural violence of the natural world. The natural world itself is naturally violent. And we see this in the wheel of life and death with animals killing each other and even with bacteria killing us. The nature of the world, of reality, is violent. But there's a lot we do have control over. And Gautung describes three areas. There's with the individual. The individual person can take training and education on how to choose nonviolence, how to communicate better and find nonviolence solutions with people. There's in terms of social and political structures, how they can be both violent and oppressive and unfair and, and exploitive or we can make them fair, we can make them just, we can make them non-discriminatory, we can make them part of a prosperity for all. And finally, there's cultures. Cultures can be either violent, promoting and, and glorifying war, or they can be nonviolent. Cultures of nonviolence, cultures of peace, cultures of uh, equanimity and inclusion. And these are where we have choices. Gautung wants to make a very important point here that there are two different kinds of peace and both are necessary and often one leads into the next. One is called negative peace and that's just about stopping the violence or preventing the violence. And the other one he calls positive peace which is about the creation of long-term lasting peace. And often you can't even start creating long-lasting peace until you first just stop the violence. And he, he describes two different kinds here. There's peacemaking, which means stopping the violence, creating peace, making peace. And then there's peacekeeping, which means preventing violence from breaking out. And he describes two different forms. There's dissociative negative peace, where you're keeping the conflicting armies apart. Uh, you do that for various methods like creating walls and fences and having a referee army in the middle of them, things like this. And then there's associative negative peace, which means uh, you get them to start to talk with each other, create peace treaties and prisoner exchanges and cultural exchanges and things like this. Those are necessary steps bef often before you can start peace building, which is the building of long-term lasting peace. So he describes three different areas where we can create long-term peace. And you can, the interrelations between them, you can easily see and are very necessary. This is individual positive peace, which is create like through training and, and education and often therapy you enable, you help the person change from someone who chooses violence to choosing nonviolent solutions, making a commitment to nonviolent solutions and train them in all sorts of methods of more effective communications and empathy and things like this. And then there has to do, there is structural positive peace, which is changing laws from laws of oppression and exploitation and unfairness into laws that are about equality and justice and creating equal opportunity for all. 
And finally, there's cultures, transforming cultures from cultures of violence or cultures of uh, war, cultures that glorify guns, cultures that are um, uh, discriminatory into cultures of peace, cultures of nonviolence, cultures of equality and inclusion. Gautam and the United Nations have a very clear definitive definition of what is needed to create a lasting peace, a sustainable peace. Okay, so for Gautung, he has six terms. And what this means is that Gautung believes that what's necessary to create a peace that lasts is respect for human rights, a system of justice, equality, plus also clear communications and cooperation, and also that there needs to be some kind of infrastructure that supports ongoing work on lasting peace. So for example, a regular schedule of conferences, a campus full of meeting rooms, a supportive staff, all these things working together so that creating a sustainable peace, a lasting peace is easy. What's remarkable is the parallels of this to the UN ideas about what's needed for a culture of peace, that a culture of peace is needed for lasting peace. And here's what they consider to be a, uh, the features of a culture of peace according to resolution 53 slash 243. These values were developed by the Barrett Value Center in cooperation with Nonviolence International analyzing the main resolution on the cultural piece from the UN, which is UN Resolution 53-243. And in addition, that resolution set, uh, emphasizes the importance of all segments of society working together, cooperating together to maintain the peace. And they include in that academia, business, uh, civil society, government, cultural institutions, religious institutions, um, you know, uh, the arts community, uh, the peace community, uh, sci scientific community. So all, uh, cooperation is needed from every segment of society in order to maintain the peacefulness. So one area of controversy is that what do you do when you have leadership that resists these things? Like they know full well that these things are necessary for a lasting peace, but yet they resist them because, well, for selfish reasons or because they're psychopaths or sociopaths. And so what you, we find is with the great leaders over in history, that there are levels of uh, different types of nonviolent action. History is shown to be effective against such uh, negative leadership. So we have, uh, first there's just nonviolent communications where people learn how to communicate very effectively and listen to each other's needs and practice empathy and practice active listening and stuff like this. But when you have a leadership or uh, a conflicting party that won't listen, then you have the next level of nonviolent conflict resolution. And this is a form of communication which is very proactive in breaking down conflicts so that win-win solutions can be more effectively found. And then when nonviolent conflict resolution doesn't work, then you have nonviolent action and nonviolent resistance. And this is to resistance, um, nonviolent methods for resisting oppressive leadership or exploitive leadership that will, will not respond to reasonable demands, will not respond to reasonable needs of their people. And so that's what we saw with Gandhi in India and Martin Luther King in the United States and Mandela in South Africa, and Cesar Chavez in California in the grape fields, and with Mubarak Awad, the founder of Nonviolence International in Israel, Palestine. All of these cases led to the successful overturning of the oppressive regime, except for Mubarak's efforts in Israel, Palestine, because Israel deported him and then would not 
allow him to return. But uh, it is controversial whether violence is also effective in those kinds of situations, because actually in, in those different situations, along with the nonviolent efforts, there was violence. So that's a matter of controversy and a matter of ongoing study. Now in modern peace building, the effort to create long-term peace, some of the most exciting developments are scientific methods to measure peacefulness. The Positive Peace Index, which is created by the Institute of Economics and Peace, is a complex analytical tool of a country's socioeconomic factors. The Barrett Culture Center has been analyzing cultures since 1989, has analyzed the culture of communities and countries and corporations and nonprofit groups. Uh, since 1989, they've done over 6,000 and involving over 750,000 individuals in their analysis. And then two years ago, within the last two years, they began working with Nonviolence International to bring in the culture of pre peace values to compare to the analysis, to show the uh, state of the culture of the organization in terms of peacefulness. And basically, the way that works is in well-established, this is methods well-established by the social sciences. Of They do surveys of the values and compare the values. So there's the values of a significant percentage of members of that group. And then they compare it to what those members see as the current values of the organization. Then they compare it to what they desired the values to be. And finally, they compare it to the values of the culture of peace. And then that complex uh, statistical analysis then creates the profile to show how that organization is working, how the culture of that organization is functioning, you know, what needs improvement, what is working well, etc. In conclusion, Johann Gautam, the Barrett System, uh, Institute of Economics and Peace, and Nonviolence International would make four main points. The first thing is that just stopping violence, just uh, preventing violence, doesn't really work. It may be necessary to stop the violence or prevent it, but then you have to go and you have to change the factors that have led to the violence. The second point is that's what necessary to do that is to create a system and a culture that promotes human rights, equality, justice, where all segments of society are involved in the process of maintaining the peace, that improves education and training for individuals, how to commit to and choose nonviolence solutions over violence. Number three, the things that actually create a long-term peace are robust, healthy, democratic systems that emphasize justice, equality, human rights, civil rights, etc., and also a culture of peace that glorifies and promotes nonviolence, cooperation, communications, empathy, instead of, you know, violence and guns and stuff like that. And then the last thing is that we are developing scientific methodology for measuring peace and that that should be a, a major thing that we fund and that we support is the formal measurement of peace and then acting on those measurements to increase peacefulness. One thing I would like to recommend is that you look up the uh, videos by my partner, Joni Carley, and she goes into much more depth about the measurement of the culture of peace using the Barrett value system. And uh, that's important because that's the new cutting edge in modern peace building. If you would like more information on these topics, please don't hesitate to utilize the links below to download a copy of the PowerPoint you see behind me, as well as a position paper on these topics. This video is brought to you by the volunteer teams at Nonviolence International New York advocating for nonviolent solutions at the United Nations. Nonviolence, New York, org.